the beach. It's usually seen as a place to relax and remove oneself from the stresses of life. Yet sometimes the beach can be far more exciting than peaceful. Every so often, people, and in one case, two dogs, can find some treasure buried in the sand. Some of those treasures can be worth millions, while some are priceless due to their historical importance. Today, we're going to look at some of the best beach and sea discoveries across the globe. So grab your metal detectors and let's get started. Diamonds are formed by billions of years of extreme pressure and temperature. Pearls must be the same, right? Nope. Pearls are actually created by mollusks, in particular the oyster. When the oyster is irritated by a foreign substance, say a grain of sand, they immediately go into protection mode. The oyster will cover the substance with nacre. It's the same substance that their shells are made from. As a result, a pearl is formed. The odds of finding pearls are said to be 1 in 12,000. So looking inside every mollusk you find on the beach will likely not grant you any riches. However, it can happen. In 2016, a fisherman from the Philippines found one that broke all the pearl records. It was a massive 26 inches long and weighed 75 pounds. For the past 10 years, he kept it hidden under his bed as a lucky charm. The lowest estimation of the pearl's value was a staggering $100 million. In February of this year, the UK was battered by Storm Kyra. Turbulent winds and rain caused varying degrees of destruction across the country. Yet in Sandown Bay on the Isle of Wight, the storm would actually uncover a lost piece of history, a dinosaur footprint dating back 130 million years. The sand that covered it for the millions of years was blown away by the 60 mile per hour storm. The footprint is just under 20 inches long, and it's believed that it belongs to a clade of dinosaurs known as theropods. They are dinosaurs that have hollow bones and three-toed limbs. The exact species belonging to the footprint is unknown, however, some theories point to a dinosaur called a neovenator. These beasts could grow up to 25 feet in length and weigh 4,400 pounds. Another suggestion could be that it's from a Spinosaurus baronyx. They were 33 feet in length and nearly 4,200 pounds. However, due to exposure to the elements, the footprint is likely to be washed away as the tide reaches the soft clay formation. In 2019, the beach in Harlech Gwynedd in Wales saw a priceless piece of human history, a World War II fighter plane. Yet it's not the first time that the plane has made an appearance. Since the plane crashed in the sand in 1942, it's been visible three other times, once in the 70s, once in 2007, and again in 2014. The plane is an American-made Lockheed P-38 Lightning fighter. It was buried under six and a half feet of sand. The discovery has been described as one of the most significant World War II era finds in recent history. The plane has even been given the name the Maid of Harlech. In fact, the discovery was so important that the Historic Environment Agency in Wales has taken measure to legally protect the plane. It's the first time a crashed military airplane has been given such a status. If anybody interferes with the wreckage, they can be punished with heavy fines. However, since it's been found, the plane has had its weaponry removed by the government. The plane crash landed in Harlech during a practice mission with 2nd Lieutenant Robert F. Elliott at the controls. Elliott was able to walk away from the wreck of the plane. In 2012, Kathleen Cheney and her son Patrick went for a walk along a beach in Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey. After the destruction of Hurricane Sandy, a lot of debris was scattered about. As the two walked, they spotted a collection of envelopes wrapped together with a pale pink ribbon. Cheney took the package home and warmed up the 57 damp letters by her fireplace. Then she took a read through them. The letters were dated between 1942 and 1948. They were a conversation between Dorothy Fallon and Lynn Farnham. The last letter was sent a week before they married. Cheney decided to pop on a Sherlock Holmes hat and return the letters to their authors. However, she found that Farnham had passed away in 1991, but Fallon was still around. However, she wasn't very well. So Cheney ended up contacting the niece of the couple. She was delighted to receive these treasured messages. It's believed that the letters were in the Rumson area, and yet once the hurricane hit, they floated down the Sandy Hook Bay and arrived on the beach for Cheney and her son to find. Known as the 1715 Treasure Fleet, these 12 ships were carrying a collection of valuable items during, well, you guessed it, 1715. However, on the way back to Spain, 11 of the 12 ships sank off the coast of Vero Beach, Florida in a hurricane. All the treasure was lost to the bottom of the sea. Since then, many people have looked for the mysterious goods. 
In 2010, Brent Brisbane's company purchased exclusive salvage rights to search for the broken fleet. He had a number of successes, but on July 13, 2015, exactly 300 years after the fleet sank, Brisbane would make his biggest discovery. Armed with scuba diving equipment and metal detectors, Brisbane's crew found 350 coins in the wreckage. They found that coin stash in water just six feet deep. Nine of the coins are called royals. These coins were made specifically for King Philip V of Spain. Each one of the royal coins was valued at $300,000. Altogether, their cash of coins came to $4.5 million. Brisbane estimates that there is a treasure trove of an estimated $400 million from the fleet's cargo still to be found. Whale vomit doesn't sound like something that's worth a fortune, but if we use its other name, ambergris, perhaps that would sound more worthy of being incredibly pricey. Ambergris isn't exactly whale vomit, either. It's a waxy substance that's secreted from a sperm whale's intestines. It takes years for the substance to form. It is sought after by high-price fragrance manufacturers. It helps scent to last longer. Due to its rarity, finds of it can be worth a lot of money. And that's how Ambergris got its nickname, Floating Gold. In 2016, three Omani fishermen came across perhaps the biggest piece of Ambergris of all time. As they were fishing, they noticed a horrible smell. So they looked around to see where it was coming from. As they checked their nets, they spotted the cause of the aroma, the chunk of Ambergris. The hunk came to 176 pounds in weight. Soon after the find was advertised, the group received an offer of around $2.8 million, and yet they rejected it. They're looking for significantly more. It's expected that they can get around $3 million for their ambergris. One day in 2012, Vincent Thurkettle was walking along the beach in Anglesey, Wales. For the past seven summers, he had walked along the beach looking for buried goods, but he hadn't had much luck. In 1859, the Royal Charter ship sank off the coast of Anglesey due to a powerful hurricane. Along with the passengers lost, many treasures were swallowed up by the ocean. Since then, people have flocked to the British islands to search for shipwrecked gold that's been swept onto the beach. On this particular day in 2012, Thurkettle was shallow diving in six feet deep water. He then saw something gleaming on the seabed. He found one of the biggest gold nuggets in British history. It came to 3.4 ounces in weight. The value is said to be $62,000. After he went public with his discovery four years later in 2016, many treasure hunters arrived in Anglesey to look for more lost gold. The value of the missing ship's treasure is said to be worth almost $150 million altogether. During 2018, Tanya Illman and her friend Grace Ricciardo took a walk out on the sand dunes. Their car had gotten stuck in sand at Wedge Island in Australia. As her husband, Kim Illman, tried to get the car unstuck, the two friends wanted to get some air. Tanya Illman spotted a gin bottle on the ground that she thought would look nice on her bookshelf, so she picked it up. Then they saw something inside the bottle. When they took it out, it was a piece of rolled paper with string wrapped around it. However, there wasn't a lid on the bottle. As a result, the note was damp, so they took the note home and warmed it carefully in the oven. They discovered afterwards that the letter was written in 1886, making this the oldest letter in a bottle found in history at 132 years. It was written by an officer on a German ship called Paula. The note was an experiment conducted by the crew. It stated that whoever finds the note should contact the German consulate, which the Ilmans did among other organizations. In 1622, hurricanes sank a Spanish fleet of ships in the Florida Keys. Since then, many divers have searched the waters to track down any of the treasure lost in those shipwrecks. In 2008, Michael DeMar was diving the area for the company Blue Water Ventures. He was in a section of water that was 18 feet deep. Armed with a metal detector, he went to work. Soon after, his detector began to register something. DeMar assumed that it had found a beer can, but he looked anyway. What he found instead of a worthless tin can was a golden chalice. It was splattered with white marine crust yet it was easy to see that it was made of solid gold. It was also etched with scroll work and decorative handles. The five-inch tall chalice could be part of the Santa Margarita ship that was one of the vessels that sank decades earlier. Immediately, there were estimations that the chalice could be sold for a million dollars. However, it wouldn't be sold until a 2015 auction. And that's where it went for $413,000. While it's less than half of the early estimations, it's still worth a small fortune. 
Friendly Floaties is a collection of bath toys made by The First Years. In 1992, a container ship was braving a storm in the North Pacific Ocean. However, one of the shipping containers fell overboard and opened. 29,000 bath toys were lost to the ocean, many of which were classic yellow rubber ducks. Yet the accident was not a complete waste. The floaties have been arriving on shores all over the world, such as Scotland, Hawaii, and Newfoundland, among others. There are websites where people can upload pictures of their duck discoveries. The accident has shown scientists how the currents of various oceans work, which can provide them with better understanding of environmental issues. In the North Pacific Gyre, 2,000 ducks can be seen circulating the currents. In 2019, John Gopsels was walking his dogs, Poppy and Sam, on a beach in Bridgewater in Somerset, England. Gopsel noticed that his dogs were excited by something in the sand exposed by the low tide. Being an amateur fossil hunter, Gopsel had high hopes of what it might be. The two pups had found an ichthyosaur fossil that was 5 feet 5 inches long. Ichthyosaur is Greek for fish lizard. They were marine reptiles that went extinct 90 million years ago. They could get as big as 46 feet. Immediately, Gopsel called the authorities. They calculated that they had a four-hour window to extract the fossil safely. Otherwise, strong tide could wash the discovery away as they excavate. However, they managed to dig out the 350-pound block containing the fossil with no issues. This particular fossil was named Poppy after one of Gopsel's fossil hunting dogs. After further tests, the Poppy fossil was found to be 197 million years old. And that's it. Well, next time we go on a beach holiday, we'll be taking our metal detector, just in case. Which treasure impressed you the most? Have you ever gone hunting with a metal detector and found something? Pop your comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share it on social media. Those actions really help us out. If you haven't already, subscribe and click that little bell. That way you'll be notified whenever we post any new content. Finally, thanks for joining us at The Richest, and we'll see you next time.